don't, don't, don't call me Superman if you haven't found my kryptonite. What is going on, YouTube? It is the Big K Cop 360 here, and I've already talked to you guys about Polaris, but we do have some more information um, concerning AMD's next generation of GPUs, the new GCN. 4.0 architecture, uh, codename Polaris. Now, of course, at CES 2015, AMD did show off two GPUs. One is called Polaris 11. That is essentially the big daddy, the Fury X successor. It's a very, very big GPU. Of course, no pictures were taken because no pictures were allowed. But it's essentially, it's the Fury X successor. It's going to perform really well and it's just going to be a beast. I mean, AMD is quoting that, um, look, Polaris and all the Polaris GPUs are going to be the most revolutionary jump in performance so far. And of course, I'm not really surprised. We're moving from 28 nanometer architecture to 14 nanometers. We've seen NVIDIA with Pascal. Um, they're really hyping up Pascal as well, man. People are expecting Pascal to be absolute beasts of, uh, gener of a generation of GPU, man. P I believe NVIDIA at one point said at least... 2x the performance jump so that's going to be really good as well i'm really keen for pascal and there's going to be a lot of competition but of course continuing on what is more interesting about what amd unveiled at ces is the polaris 10 gpu now what's interesting about it is that this card this gpu is about the size of an r7250x about the size of cape verde and that gpu is roughly i don't know but this article is quoting 123 millimeters squared so that's relatively small i mean you've got if you guys look at like gk 110 or the um the hawaii gpu they're much bigger than fucking 123 millimeters squared but um continuing on it's a, it's a small gpu uh, Cape Verde, the 250X, it's relatively bad in performance, but getting to the point, AMD pretty much said that, look, we can get console caliber performance out of this small GPU and we can, that allows us to chuck it into small form factor laptops, into thin laptops. Now, of course, some of you guys, uh, some of you guys, sorry, might argue, well, Cobbs, we've already got 980Ms in laptops, 970Ms in laptops, well, look, uh, those 980Ms in those laptops, look at how fucking fat those laptops are. The MSI, like the gaming series laptops, yeah, they're really, really good. Uh, the 980M itself is a very good card. It's like a GTX 970 in a laptop. However, the thing is, look, it's, it's very fat. It's a thick laptop. The battery life is not very good at all. I mean, there's a lot of flaws that come with having a powerful gaming notebook. So by having this, this R7250X size chip, which has console caliber performance, which is relatively good. I mean, console caliber performance, if we're talking Xbox One, we're talking like uh, 7790, but if we're talking PS4, we're talking 7850 to 7870, and even, I was being pretty, like, uh, crucial or critical of the Xbox One, it's more, it's, it's better than the 7790, I'll put it that way, but around that area, that kind of 7790 to 7870 range in that band right there, um, having performance on a laptop, a thin, like an, imagine like an Ultrabook with that grade of graphics, that in itself is absolutely great. I mean, what does that mean for like the other laptop fucking GPUs, like the higher end ones? We're going to be seeing insane performance gains, guys. I'm telling you, this is going to be really, really good. Now, of course, how much will these actually cost? That's the big question because look, once again, if AMD comes out with all these really good cards, a whole new generation, Arctic Islands, Polaris, and then the GPUs end up being like a really like bad price, like expensive as hell, then I really don't know. But look, guys, this is AMD's last chance. Zen and Polaris are AMD's last hope. If they can't succeed well with both of these chips, with both of these cards, these CPUs, these GPUs, then they're done, man, because they're in a lot of debt. They really need to make money. So I'm sure they know what they're doing. By AMD establishing the Radeon Technologies Group, man, it's essentially ATI 2.0, man. It really is. It's like ATI Reborn. There's just been so much focus, a lot of hype within these GPUs. It's really, really good. I mean, compared to the R9200 series with Hawaii, I mean, sure, they went to Hawaii and they unveiled it. But, I mean, this is this is something different. There's a lot more hype to this. There's been so much build up and you've got nvidia on the other side of pascal talking shit saying you know our cards are going to be great it's it's such a it's a great time to be a pc gamer because just watching all of this unfold it really really is great and i just can't wait to see what happens now of course 
this Polaris 10 uh, GPU, this smaller Cape Verde size GPU, will also be targeted uh, in the mainstream desktop segment. Now, of course, it's not going to be one of the highest end GPUs. It's probably going to be in the middle. For all we know, it could literally be replacing the 250X and be having a substantial increase in performance. If that's true, then man, that says a lot on what AMD's got in store for us because we're going to be seeing some really, really good GPUs. Now, of course, Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. Um, I'm hoping these aren't the only two new GPUs we see. I'm assuming that there won't be any rebrands at all. I mean, maybe, you know, the R3210 will be a rebrand of something, but I honestly think from maybe the 250 up to like the top end card, there won't be a single rebrand. I'm hoping that's the case. I may be wrong, but at this point, I just don't think there will be. I mean, we're at, at least seeing three new GPUs. If we've got Polaris 11, there's going to be a cut down Polaris 11. And if we, and we've got Polaris 10 in itself, I'm not sure if we'll see a cut down Polaris 10 like you do the 390 to the 390X, but um, we're just going to have to wait and see. But yeah, guys, look, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and comment down below, man. Console grade performance on an Ultrabook. Look, Ultrabooks these days, for example, do not have dedicated graphics for the most part. I mean, I don't see an Ultrabook with like a, an M295X or with a 980M. It just doesn't happen because they're too small, they're too thin, and those GPUs put out too much heat um, for the cooling systems within those Ultrabooks to handle. So once again, we've got these small form factor GPUs. They use a lot less power. It's going to be great. It's just going to be epic, man. I just can't wait. I can't tell you guys how excited I really am. But yeah, so look, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Look, the BK, we'll see you later.